Hey guys, welcome back to another chess video in this channel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the different moves in a game where Paul Morphy and the Duke of some place that starts with a B. I don't know. But Paul Morphy, if you don't already know, he's a really good chess master and he was playing against the duke and the duke's friend I think so the duke and his friend was black Paul Morphy was white so I'm gonna be showing the whole game and discussing what happens in the game so let's get into it So here, Paul Morphy is white, remember? So, this game took place in the 1800s, late 1800s, um, so you could say it's kind of old, but here, uh, Paul Morphy, he's white, and he decides to bring the pawn in front of his king up two squares, meaning pawn e4. Now the duke, decides to move his pawn, pawn e5. Not much to discuss there. I mean, it's just the opening part. Paul Morphy, now he brings his knight up. It's a classic uh, start to perhaps the four knights opening. Um, so, of course, that knight is to attack the e5 pawn. Now, is something I really don't agree with. That pawn moving up to d6, not something that I agree with. I mean, sure, the worst move is moving the f pawn to f6, but that pawn d6 is kind of bad. I would suggest bringing the knight to knight c6. Because, first of all, that develops a whole piece. Like, it develops a piece instead of a pawn. Pawns, you can't really develop them. They're already developed, I guess you would say. But a knight would be better to develop. And, second of all, that d6 pawn blocks the bishop on f8. The dark square bishop. Black's dark square bishop is now being blocked. Remember how before d6 it was it was on d7? That bish that dark square bishop had a clear pass. So next, Paul Morphy decides to bring his d pawn up to d4. This is I guess good. It first adds pressure to the e5 pawn because now there's two attackers on the e5 pawn and it also opens up both bishops paths now here the duke and his friend decides to move their bishop to g4 so g4 that's a good move i mean it's a pin Remember how in one of my videos I discussed pins? Pins are when it's literally a pin. It pins a piece to a better piece. So here, that black bishop is pinning the knight to the queen. But Paul Morphy, he has more to worry about. So he takes the pawn on e5. Now the duke and his friend takes the knight on f3. So here, the queen is in danger, so, I mean, you guessed it, the queen takes back, and the duke then takes the pawn on e5. Now Morphy, 
moves his bishop up to c4 to attack that f f7 square because if you notice now the queen and the bishop are looking at the f7 square if the duke and his friend doesn't do anything about it it'll be a checkmate by queen takes f7 but of course the duke probably saw this so he moves the knight up that is a good move first it develops a piece second it blocks the queen's pass to the checkmate but now here paul morphy he, he still decides to keep the pressure on that f7 square so then now it's both the bishop and the queen looking at the f7 square eyeing it really greedily but black of course he sees this so he moves the queen up in front of the king and now white he decides to just develop another piece so he moves his knight up to defend the e4 square but now the duke decides to move his pawn up one square now that is quite an amateur move because i'm pretty sure you've seen this already but it's just to get that bishop out of the way it's really an amateur move because it blocks that knight on b8 it blocks his path to c6 so that is it blocks his development so now paul morphy plays bishop to g5 now that is a pin another pin i feel like paul morphy well of course he was the, probably the greatest master that ever lived um i feel like he's not making any mistakes that's my opinion but now it's a pin and the duke what does he do about the pin doesn't do anything moves that pawn to attack the bishop nothing else just moving that pawn on b7 to b5 to attack that white bishop now here's what happens paul morphy sacrifices his knight because one that knight doesn't really need to defend that e4 pawn anymore because the only attacker on the e4 pawn is now pinned. The knight on f6 is pinned. And second of all, you'll see here, so the duke of course takes the knight back, and now white, he can take that pawn, and the king, the black king is wide open. like really wide. Those two pawns actually would have helped that king survive another day, but the duke traded and traded them off even though white is down 1 point. If you go by point count, a knight is 3 points and two pawns are just two points. But positional advantage is for white. White has a positional advantage right now. The king is not really being attacked. Only black is being attacked. And that diagonal, it's a check. So now black, he decides to move his knight up and block it. Afterwards, white castles queen side. This, first of all, protects his king. It protects his king because it's a castle. Second of all, the rook is now moved towards the d file instead of just moving the rook towards the d file he morphe castles to move it so it's like killing two birds with one stone so that adds another attacker 
to the knight on uh, d7. So black, of course, will have to defend. He moves his rook to d8. And now the rook, white's rook, then takes that knight. Now you might be like, but white doesn't have enough defenders. He only has that bishop as a defender, while black has a rook, a queen, and a king. So what's the point of that? Well, rook, black's rook, will obviously take, of course not the queen. And now, here, white moves his other rook down to d1. Now this is adding another attacker to the game. So, now black moves his queen up. Um, I guess that is to get away from that pin. From the pin, the pin of the knight. So then his knight could be free. White then takes the rook with his bishop. Now, don't think too quickly here because it's not a fork. It's not a real fork. Because now... The knight takes. Even though the bishop was protected by the rook, the knight could still take. But here's the grand finale. The queen moves down to b8 and checks the king. Now, if you noticed, black the black king cannot move up a square because that bishop is eyeing that diagonal. The only move here is the black knight taking the white queen. Now you might be like, why would white want to just check but then loses a queen? Here's the thing. Black's knight was Black's knight was blocking the check the checkmate move. So now the white rook can come down to d8 and checkmate the black king. Now the black king, it doesn't have anyone to block the rook. It doesn't have anyone to capture the rook because the rook is being defended by the white bishop. So it's a true checkmate. Unlike other games, I realize that this game played out through the end. No one resigned after many moves. Like other grandmasters, they they resign because they see a definite checkmate coming. But this game, I mean, I like it. It's called the Opera Game. So if you want to check that out, just search up the Opera Game. And I guess I'll wrap it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and click that notifications bell so you never miss another video.